Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez here, your favorite wrestling fan. Hoping you guys had an amazing Wednesday. Hope you guys are getting through the week, you know, pretty well. Hope you guys are looking forward to um, Thursday night football tomorrow, also Friday night SmackDown. Obviously, we have, uh, you know, college football on Saturdays, and we have the NFL on Sundays. So, um, you know, Nice, you know, handful of things to kind of look forward to to kind of get us through the week. But we are almost there. Two more days and, uh, you know, smooth sailing from here. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today on tap tonight. We're going to talk about some NXT. We're going to talk about AEW Dynamite uh, Title Tuesday. We're also going to talk about my way to early predictions of WWE Crown Jewel. And we're also going to talk about Candice LeRae becoming the inaugural WWE Women's Speed Champion. So kudos to her. Congratulations. Uh, in our fifth and final segment, something we do every Wednesday, I give you guys my Wednesday's weekly wrestling news roundup where, you know, just kind of, you know, give you guys a couple of breaking news headlines around the professional wrestling industry. Kind of wrap your heads around and kind of ponder, you know, you know, any free time or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and jump on into it. But before we do any of that, I want to remind you guys, if you have a hot take, or burning question you are dying to get off your chest here at the GSMC Sports Network. We are all ears a thousand and ten percent. We are all about making sure that your voice is part of the mix. So don't be shy. Drop your thoughts inside that chat. And if you really want to make sure your comment, question, or concern gets noticed on the show and addressed, why not use that super chat? It's a dollar sign below that chat box. Whatever you put in there, it's going to be guaranteed to be featured on the show. So we can have a nice little back and forth conversation about it. Obviously, love a lot of audience engagement. Um, so, uh, yeah, and also guys, it's a great way to support our channel. Keep the lights on in terms of all these GSMC sports podcasts. We bring you awesome content Monday through Friday. We are absolutely super grateful for each and every one of you guys who joins us here daily on for, for every single one of the shows. Your support makes all the difference. So let's keep the conversation going. Send in those super chats, those super stickers, because you guys are super awesome. And together, we will make sure this show is bigger, better, and stronger than ever. Uh, once again, if you're not down with the super chat, we are still at the gsmcpodcast.net. Hit up the tips and donations link. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Just remember to Superman punch that like a subscribe button to the show. Follow the show, follow the network here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity, but criticism is all part of the game of sports. So, obviously, feedback is a gift. Whatever you guys have to say, drop it inside that chat, and uh, we'll have a nice little um, you know, conversation about it. So, let's go ahead and jump on into our first segment. It was a good episode. A great episode of WWE NXT it was the second one on the CW. They were live in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, it was a... It was pretty cool. You know, you saw Trick Williams come out. Um, you know, he was super, obviously, that's what the champion should look like. Not really any, you know, opposition of why they would put the belt back on Trick. I, I think Ethan Page kind of, you know, he did what he had to do. Like, you know what I mean? He helped, he kind of helped bridge NXT into that new era on the CW, and I, I think it's heading toward a great direction. Uh, Trick Williams is so over right now with the fans. The fans absolutely love him, 1,010%. Um, also something, just, you know, a little um, just a little observation, just looking at the venue. I liked it. It looked a little bit about, you know, kind of like classic Monday Night Raw at the Barclays Center kind of feel to it, which was pretty cool. Wesley came out, obviously, stating to Trick Williams that he wants a shot. At the NXT Championship, um, but then out of nowhere, and when I say out of nowhere, it was out of nowhere. Uh, main event, Jay Uso came, obviously, the WWE Intercontinental Champion. Didn't really have much to say, just, you know, came out and started yeeting, uh, you know, along with Trick Williams. Um, you know, not, like I said, not, not really any purpose or anything like that. But obviously, yeah, it served this purpose to kind of gain more attention to, uh, you know, NXT, which is looking to stand on their own you know, debuting on shows and stuff like that. And it was kind of crazy because, you know, it was surprising and it was pretty awesome. I got to be honest. Uh, not really a surprise because, you know, you had uh, St. Louis. Monday Night Raw was in St. Louis. So it's kind of like, all right, we kind of knew that was, you know, right around the corner. Wesley magically disappeared, which was kind of weird, you know, and then Jay Uso and um, Antrick Williams stayed in the ring while Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill came out and Kelani Jordan. 
and then they magically disappeared. So it was a little, it was a little wonky. I gotta be honest, it was a little wonky, but you know, obviously, I understand why they did it. So then we had Kaylani Jordan, the NXT Women's North American Champion, teaming up with the, the WWE World Women's Tag Team Champions, Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair, taking on the Fatal Influence. And obviously, this match was, you know, dead to right from the very get go. We saw Jordan, Jade, and Bianca pick up the victory. Not really any surprise there. Next, you see uh, Roxanne Perez and, uh, you know, Jade, uh, Cora Jade come out to address what exactly should the fans interpret what happened between their partnership at uh, at uh, the first episode um, last week when Julia was trying to dethrone Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Championship. Didn't really get much of a, um, you know, they were, they were kind of cut off, you know, they were cut off, but... I, you know, I was so sure that Cora Jade was going to, like, you know, tell Roxanne Perez. She was like, you know what? Like, I came here, but, I, you know, I th- I thought she was going to kind of hint at wanting a shot at her, uh, you know, NXT women's title. But it never came along, like I said. Then, um, you know, then Stephanie. No, then Julia came out first. And, of course, Stephanie Vercure, you know, then followed. But, um, you know, they, they came in. They beat them up. Now they have the NXT World Women's Championship held hostage, which is, you know, which is, you know, kind of funny, kind of cool. You know what I mean? I get it. Like, the, but um, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I thought the, I thought when Stephanie came out for the first time, I don't know. I just thought it would have been bigger. Like, you know, she did, you know, technically this isn't her first time, you know, this isn't her first time. You know, she was featured on the Titan Tron telling Julia and Roxanne Perez at their contract signing that, you know, she's going to be waiting in line for whoever, um, you know, has the belt next. So. You know, this, um, you know, this alliance formed between Julia and Vakur, uh, you know, obviously just temporary, much like I feel like this Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez um, alliance as well. Temporary. We're going to have a tag team match probably between the two, you know, sometime close. I think it might be advertised next week on NXT, but um, overall it was, it was a good promo. It was a good promo. Then you saw Alexis King wants to go ahead and challenge Aura Menta. Uh, to a gentleman's duel. Thought that was pretty crazy. Rent Sinclair challenges uh, Stephanie Vercure for a match next week. Um, no doubt in my mind that you're probably going to see Roxanne Perez and, uh, you know, Cora Jade get involved in that. Um, you know, then we saw the match. The match that was, uh, you know, that was a little, you know, crazy. The dawn of NXT, Tony D'Angelo dethrones the longest reigning WWE NXT um, uh, North American Championship. He he has the reign. You know he's number one in the longest reigns. Uh, kind of crazy. He successfully retained the title ten times. Obviously made that title very very prestigious. And uh, you know uh, you know the Don looked overpowered. He looked overpowered, uh, but overall he was able to kind of get it together. And he was ultimately uh, you know ready for. He was ultimately ready to kind of fight, you know, and he's the new champion. He was ready to take the, take the title. But, um, you know, a lot of mixed feelings about this match. I really thought Oba wasn't going to lose that belt until, like, I think, maybe much later. But now, you know, he's probably going to take a little hiatus. You know, once when everything's figured out with the next challenger of the WWE NXT World Champion, you know, Trick Williams, who, who he's going to fight next. There's no doubt in my mind he's going to, you know, throw his hat, in, hat inside that ring. And by all means, he deserves it. You know, I don't know if he's going to invoke a rematch clause, which he probably, you know, he probably should. But, you know, I like that the WWE NXT North American Championship is, like, now available, I guess you can say. So now there's a lot of mid-card wrestlers that can have a shot at, you know, kind of being, kind of being a superstar. You know, kind of being bigger, kind of having a chance to kind of showcase their talents and exactly what is what they have to do to become like to be drafted to raw or SmackDown. If that's what they want to do, because uh, NXT is kind of its own entity right now. But, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh no, I'm NXT. You know what I mean? But I don't, usually people are super thrilled to kind of come back. Nikita Lyons is back on NXT. Thought it was pretty cool. We have a WWE women's tag team titles match on uh, SmackDown between Lash legend and Mix Jackson. Waiting for that to be made official. A Town Down Under, of course, lost against Ax- uh, a- Axiom and Nathan Frazier for the WWE uh, Tag Team Championships, which was great. I would have rioted if Austin Theory and Grayson Waller became champions. I got to be honest. Um, I, I, you know, it's it, it, when is it gonna end? Like, you know, what I mean, it's, every single time you're watching these two guys, 
you're expecting someone to attack the other. You know, you're expecting a breakup. One of them's going to be healed. One of them's going to be a baby face. And it's just just questions, questions like when is it going to happen? Like at this point, I'm you know I'm kind of itching for it. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, I you know I was happy Axiom and Nathan Fraser retained. I thought that was pretty badass. Then he saw Riley Osborne attack Ridge Holland. Obviously, the Chase U is not done with Ridge Holland just yet. Sexy Red came out with the performance. She was interrupted by Ethan uh, Ethan Page. He wants a rematch with his uh, you know with his rematch clause. Um, I was kind of happy that he interrupted, you know, Sexy Red. Like, she started performing, and it was just like, I don't know. Like, it just didn't seem like it necessarily, like, it didn't seem like it fit. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, she is from Atlanta, Georgia, and she has a lot of hometown crowd, you know, friends and family that were probably inside the crowd as well. Um, but it was just, I don't know. It just didn't seem like it fit. Like, it seemed like it could have been. I don't know, maybe a little bit more, but then the song she was singing, I was like, and the, I don't know, it's just, you know, I'm not trying to hate, I'm not trying to hate, you know, on that, you know, on, on music or anything like that. Really not my cup of tea, but I, you know, I do, you know, I, I, I dabble in some hip hop and some rap here and there, but overall, you know, I don't know. I just, uh, seemed like it wasn't, you know, feel like it could have been better. And I know I, you know, I, I said that before, but I'm sticking to it, sticking to it. All right, and then we have the main event. We have Javon Evans taking on Randy Orton. Not much to say about this match. It was Javon Evans was impressive for being young, but once again, good match. But Javon Evans is still a baby. You know, he's still a baby in terms of, um, you know, in the wrestling industry and the botch. He botched an RKO. After the match, he told Randy Orton that he was, you know, he's like, hey, man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Randy Orton was like, you know what, man? It's it's okay. Don't worry. You're the man. Then raised his hand after the match, which was pretty cool. I liked that finish. And I liked how, because Randy Orton does, Kind of have a reputation of, uh, you know, making people pay, pay back for botching a move, you know, and keeping those receipts, so to speak. So, uh, you know, finally came to an understanding. is like, you know what? He's just a kid. He's learning. He's only 20 years old. So not much you can do. Uh, not much you can do there. All right, guys. So, hey, do not go anywhere. We talked about WWE NXT. Now we're going to talk about some AEW Dynamite's title Tuesday. So grab your favorite snack, grab your favorite ice cold beverage and join me here in about 20 seconds. 